kick it, Jackie Chan. Oh, Jamar Chase with the dive. You know, Garrett Wilson's wide open. Garrett Wilson, touchdown Barrett. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video in the World of Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of rebuilding whatever team I feel like on one of these mods on the PC here on Madden 24. That is right, it's a working title. <laughs> Today, you probably already know, we are going to be rebuilding the 2015 Jameis Winston Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yes, I know, I know, Jameis Winston has become somewhat of a meme in the NFL media, or I guess in the fans' media around the NFL, and for good reason. He's kind of a clown type of personality. He's not the greatest quarterback ever, so it, it kind of feeds that a little bit better. And he's a gunslinger. He will just chuck that ball wherever he wants, whether it's a pick, whether it's a touchdown, whether he's got a receiver wide open, or whether that receiver's got double coverage or triple coverage. He will chuck that ball, and you got to respect it. A lot of quarterbacks don't do that, and there's good reason for it. James Winston, there's a reason he's a backup, but he was a number one overall pick. He did have a few decent seasons. He did have a 30-30 season. If you're not familiar with what a 30-30 season is, it's 30 touchdowns, 30 picks, which in the World of Juice universe is very common. <laughs> but we are going to be trying to get this Tampa Bay Buccaneer roster to the level of a championship team that they were when Tom Brady showed up, when Rob Gronkowski showed up, Antonio Brown, all those guys. We got to get them to that level when they won the championship. Now, obviously, we're going to stick with Jameis Winston the entire video instead of Tom Brady, but we're going to try to get this this uh, Jameis Winston Bucks team to that same level. So if you guys are excited, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I truly appreciate you guys stopping by, especially on, what is this, going to go up on Christmas Eve, I think? So have great, great Christmas Eve. Spend time with your families and your loved ones. If you don't celebrate Christmas and you celebrate Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or whatever holiday you celebrate, or if it's just a normal day for you, Welcome, relax, have a great time, and let's rebuild the Jameis Winston Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is what we're working with for season number one. Obviously, we've got our main catalyst of this organization, of this roster. He's a rookie. He is our franchise, and they've given him an X-Factor. Now, I'm not going to say that's a wrong decision or a right decision. I didn't make the roster. I didn't make the mod. So... They've given Jameis Winston out the gates an X factor. I don't have a problem with it, obviously, because we're gonna be we're gonna be utilizing that. But this is what we have to work with with rookie Jameis Winston on this Tampa Bay roster here in 2015. The the uh, defending, I guess, would be the word number one overall pick. The current number one overall pick, the most recent number one overall pick, is Jameis Winston. Obviously, Marcus Mariota's in Tennessee. We've got the muscle hamster, Doug Martin, a man that literally has fallen off the face of the earth after he left the NFL. Now, I don't know if that's for legal reasons, because he might not have been natty. There's a reason they might have called him the muscle hamster. <laughs> but, hey, it's it's not, my, it's not my call. He just fell off the face of the earth. He's going to be our running back for a little bit. I don't know if, I guess, if we win a bunch of games... He could develop into a, a high 90 overall X-Factor running back. So there's always a possibility he could be our franchise running back. We've got some studs at wide receiver. Well, at least one stud. We've got Mike Evans, who's in his second season. He's a big body. He's going to be the main target for Jameis, I'm hoping. Now, obviously, we know because of hindsight who's coming up in the next couple of drafts in terms of receivers. So... We could pair Mike Evans alongside some very interesting, good, talented players. And maybe we can have a huge, amazing, fantastic wide receiver core. That's all up in the air. We've got Vincent Jackson as well. Is, I don't want to, oh, I don't know. I don't rem did Vincent Jackson pass away? Or is it another, there's another guy that I always get mixed up with Vincent Jackson. But I don't remember if he's the one that passed away or not. If he is... Rest in peace. If he's still alive, then I apologize for, for saying that you were dead. I, 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 I don't, I think he's the one, maybe it was, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, 
I forget. I, I, I apologize. I forget. It doesn't matter. We move on. He's a good receiver, but he's still, he's older. He's 32. We'll probably get to move on from him at some point. We've got Donovan Smith at left tackle, who is 22 years old, a rookie. We don't have to, we shouldn't have to worry about our left tackle spot the rest of the rebuild, but the rest of the offensive line probably is going to need a little bit of an upgrade. We've got an older Logan Mankins. We've got Ali Marpet, who should be young as well. He is a rookie. So hopefully Ali Marpet develops alongside Donovan Smith, and we don't have to worry about the left tackle or the right, guards, the right guard spot. Everybody else could use a little bit of an upgrade. I mean, uh, DeMar Dotson, 29 years old, probably going to need an upgrade. Tight end is going to need an upgrade. We've got a young Cameron Brait, but I guess maybe he turns out to be something. I don't know. He could if we go to Kansas City's playbook. That's always a possibility. And then on defense, it needs a lot of work. We've obviously got one of the best D tackles of the 2010s. We've got Gerald McCoy, unbelievable player, and he's still 27, so we've still got a few years with him of good development and stuff, especially if we win games. And then we've got Levante David, who is 25. He's an X-Factor. This isn't the Levante David that you know from nowadays where he's a little bit older. He regresses a lot faster. No, this is this is starting to get into his prime, Levante David. So we, we like that out on the right side. We've got Quan Alexander, who's a little bit low overall for my liking. But this team needs a lot of work. We've got Alteron Werner, who I haven't heard, in, heard that name in a long time. We've got some work to do on the defense. That is for sure. This is a lot like the... What is it the Jets rebuild or is it the Lions rebuild? One of the rebuilds we had to completely re rework the entire defense. I think that might have been the Lions, but I can't remember for sure. One of my most recent rebuilds we had to completely re rework the defense and I think that something similar is going to happen for this uh, Tampa Bay roster as well. Offense needs a few pieces here and there, uh, but the defense needs a complete rework. So we're going to be loading in the 2016 NFL Draft class because that is next up. It's obviously Jared Goff. It's Carson Wentz. But more importantly for us, it's Joey Bosa. It's Jalen Ramsey. It's DeForest Buckner, Leonard Floyd, Carl Joseph. It's these guys that we're going to be focusing on, not necessarily the uh, the top guys like the quarterback. We don't need a quarterback. We're going to be focusing on Jameis Winston. Now, if you guys are curious about the draft classes, uh, I'm not going to go too in-depth in this video, and I don't really go in-depth in my rebuild videos. When I go in-depth is my Giants rebuild and my Browns rebuild. Those are actual series where we go season by season and one season per video. So if you're curious, go check out the 2016 version of either one of those videos, and you'll see a more in-depth talk about each player and who's in the class, who's in the draft class at each position, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to go into it here. It takes way too long. So... I'm just going to go off the assumption that you know and you're familiar with who's in this class. And we're going to talk about some of the guys like Jalen Ramsey. I'm not really sure who I want to go for because obviously we need a receiver. But notoriously, the 2016 class isn't known for having amazing receivers. I mean, they've got guys like Michael Thomas and Tyreek Hill. I'm not saying they, don't have, they didn't have any receivers come out of this class that were great. But it's not top heavy by any means. Tight end, we could look to get like a Hunter Henry or an Austin Hooper. Probably not going to go for a, a Hunter Henry. I don't want to take a tight end that early. So maybe like a Hooper or a Higby, if they're still available when we pick, could be an option. We don't need a left tackle, but we could always move somebody to right tackle. Joe Tooney would be good. But I think from previous rebuilds, Joe Tooney's only normal development. So we'll have to keep that in mind. We know obviously Joe Tooney's a great player in real life and has been for a while. Yannick Ngakwe always develops pretty well, but he's a low overall to start. Uh, I've never gotten Jihad Ward, I don't think at least, so that could be interesting. Somebody we we go for that I don't usually go for, but that's the draft, cl the draft class, the 2016 class. And we probably need to get a new scout, because I don't want to have interior offensive line and defensive tackles not... I mean, we do need those positions, but that's not going to be for this class, that's for sure. So we are going to fire... Uh, Franklin Burke, whatever their name was, and we're going to hire, I mean, it was obviously corner and receiver was the strength, but we could just go with that, and I think we just will. We'll go with Alicia Tranquil. I think we always sign her. <laughs> She's as always the, the national scout for us, but she'll be our scout for season one. Once we pick up some corners and receivers, then we won't need her anymore, but that's going to be it for season one. I'm going to simulate season one. We're still, I think we're rocking Tampa Bay. We should be at least. Yeah, we're rocking Tampa's offense and defense. We've got not the air raid that's probably not the best scheme fit we'll go with a vertical power run and we'll go with probably the the base four three i think that eh, we'll go with a three four that gets kawan alexander a little bit more 
uh, usage and hopefully some better development. So I'm going to simulate season one. We're going to see how we do. I don't think we have more than just our own draft pick. I'm not sure though. No, we have only our own. We have all of our picks for this year, all of our picks for next year, all of our picks for the year after that. So we can make some things happen if we want to trade or, or do some things, but I'm, I don't think I'm going to be making any trades in season one. Although I don't really do trades in these type of rebuilds. So maybe I should. Maybe I should try to, to work a trade here for a young, let's see, maybe like a young linebacker. That could be fun. Is there any young middle linebackers that I could grab or outside linebackers? Let's go for left outside linebackers. Who's a nice young outside linebacker that we can maybe swing a trade for? Hmm. Donna, uh, Devin Kennard could be fun. He, he probably develops decently well, especially because he's got star development. Tyre Whitehead could be cool. Uh, ooh, we could go for like a Shaq Thompson. He just got drafted. But he might be a little bit too valuable. Alec Ogletree is a possibility. Bud Dupree just got drafted. Hmm. You know what? What do the Rams have on on Aaron Donald? Because he just got drafted. He is an ex-fat. You know, he's going to be too hard to get. <laughs> Let's just move right along. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking either Ogletree. I'm thinking either Ogletree. They gave Jamie Collins X-Factor. All right. I'm thinking either Ogletree or Whitehead, or maybe Devon Kennard. Whitehead's only got one year left. That's probably not the best, but he's going to be easier to trade for because we need to re-sign him. I don't think he's going to cost that much. We could probably make this happen. They need a corner. We don't really have any corners that I would give them except for maybe Sterling Moore. What do they say to that? They don't like it. Um, I could give them... I'd, I'd probably have to give them Bruce Carter back in return. Because we won't need him then. And then I'll give them a... Draft pick, I guess? How about like a 2018 fourth rounder? Alright, let me keep Sterling Moore. I guess I'm not going to be able to get Tiger White. I thought that he'd be a little bit easier to trade for. We are only on like normal diff trading difficulty. It's not like it's hard or anything. But I don't want to give up anything super valuable for Tiger White. I mean, he's on the last year of his deal. We don't necessarily need him that bad. I think I'm just going to stay. You know what? We're just going to... This is why I don't do a lot of trades in the beginnings of these rebuilds. Or at all in these rebuilds. We're just going to stay with the team that we have. And we are going to let it ride. See how we do in Season 1. I honestly don't know how this team's going to perform. Maybe we overperform when we make the playoffs. I have no idea. I guess we'll find out. I will catch back up with you guys when we are done with Season number 1. We've wrapped up season number one, and we didn't do as bad as I thought we were going to do. When I went to do the week 11 stuff, we were like, I don't know, like two and, what would it have been? Two and nine, or maybe three and eight, something like that. We weren't very good. We had a great second half, it looks like, and we finished six and ten. So it's not bad, but it's also not great. A little bit concerning. We'll have to figure out where we go in the draft though that's going to be a, a big question how did tampa's offensive playbooks work for Jameis? 3400 yards 19 touchdowns 14 picks i chalked that up to him just not having a ton of weapons to throw to because he's got mike evans obviously but then he's got like vincent jackson and not really a whole lot else so that's probably what that is uh doug martin 1200 yards and eight touchdowns very good season from him and yeah we just didn't have a lot of weapons for him to throw to. I mean, my, uh, Vincent Jackson led the team. He had four touchdowns. Mike Evans is right there behind him with six touchdowns, but we just don't have a lot to, for him to throw to. So we're going to have to get, obviously, some better weapons later on down the line. Danny Lansana. Okay. 125 tackles for you. Levante David. That could be start of element. I mean, he's, he's obviously only normal. 87 tackles and 10 sacks for Levante David. Could that be like defensive play of the year numbers? I mean, he had 21 tackles for loss as well. It's got to be at least close. Werner had 79 tackles. Carter had 73. Tackle for loss there was Gerald McCoy. No surprise there. Then David with 21. Uh, Carter had 11. So did Golston. Sack leader was David with 10. McCoy with 9. Carter had 4. All right. And then Werner led the team with 3 picks. McDougal had 1. All right. Intriguing stuff. I will say that it is an intriguing stuff. Doug Martin actually was second in the league in rushing. So uh, that's cool. But we don't have anything to do. We do not have anything to do this first season except for get to the offseason. 
in my week 11 scouting, I used it on Joey Bosa, on DeForest Buckner, I'm pretty sure, and then I think I used the final one on Kenny Clark. So we're we're definitely going to be focusing on defensive line probably in, in round one, I would at least say, because we need to get some help for Jared McCoy. Steelers beat the Packers in the Super Bowl. I did re-sign most of the people that we need to re-sign. There wasn't many big ones. I think Doug Martin was the biggest uh, name that we needed to re-sign. He came, he's coming back. So Roethlisberger is the MVP of the, of the Super Bowl. Alex Smith wins MVP of the league. Okay. Jeremy Macklin and Anthony Barr are your offensive defense players of the year. And then Mariota wins offensive rookie of the year. And Eric Kendricks wins defensive rookie of the year. So Mariota steals it from Winston, but Winston didn't have that great of a season to, to warrant getting... Offensive Rookie of the Year. I guess we could take a look and see how close he was. Was he even in the conversations? We'll take a peek at it. We'll take a little bit of a peek. See if he was in conversation. So, uh... Oh, I can't see in season awards. Alright, uh, that's okay. I, I skipped too far, I guess. That's alright. Let's do negotiations, because we shouldn't have anybody here. We don't want Sidebury Jr. We don't want Tony McDaniel, Isaiah Frey, Larry Dean. Don't want any of these guys... Danny Lansana didn't even go up to start development. So I would have maybe considered bringing him back if he did. But yeah, none of these guys I want back. Not even Larry English. Sterling ah, Sterling Moore had a decent season. I think he had a pick. So I'll bring him back on a two-year deal. We got the money for it. It's not like it's going to come back to bite us or anything. So he's going to come back. He had, he had a fine season. Nothing crazy. We also need to check and see if we had any developments from any of our players. Did... Doug Martin go up to X Factor because he was second in the league in rushing? I don't know. Let's find out. So we now have... Okay, so no changes on the offense. Martin stays superstar. Evan stays superstar. Winston's obviously X Factor. These two guys are the same. What about on defense? We had McCoy go up to superstar, but that is it. No other movement. Levante Dave was already X Factor. All right, this team is bad on defense. We definitely need to focus on the defense in the draft. That is for sure. And maybe... In free agency. Donald Penn. Ooh, Derek Johnson, but he's 33. That could be interesting. He wants to be here. Oh, that, that would probably hurt Quan Alexander's momentum and his development. I don't know. That's that's tricky. There's no... Marvin Jones is intriguing. That could give us another weapon. And we don't really go for a guy like Marvin Jones really ever. I'm, I'm going to offer Marvin Jones. He's 26. He wants to be here. That could be fun. Him and... That's another big body to have with him and Mike Evans. Tight ends. It's not really one I want. We don't want Donald Penn. Or we don't need Donald Penn, at least. I mean... How could you pass up on Leo Collins when he's here? Especially when he's got a development trait. So we'll offer him that. We're not even in the conversation for him? Hold on. What are the Titans and Falcons offering? Oh, I just sorted an accent. What are the Titans and Falcons offering? He wants to be here. I guess I'll pay him a little bit more. I don't know what these guys are offering him. That still doesn't put us in the conversation. It must be glitched or something. He might not end up coming here, but that's got to be glitched. Because I offered him a crazy amount of money. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, right guards, I don't really want. We don't really need. We have Marpet. Don't really like any of the D-tackles. Left ends, don't want. D-tackles, don't want. Don't want any of you. Don't want any of these guys. And then there's uh, Derek Johnson again. But I think that would hurt the development of Quan Alexander. And I don't really want to do that. Because Quan Alexander still has a chance to be something. I know he's only like a 69 overall. But he's got a chance to do something. Tremaine Johnson could be our number one corner. Even though Alteron Werner had a good season. Tremaine Johnson could be our guy. Eric Weddle's probably not the guy for us, even though we don't have any safeties that I like, really. Major Wright's not going to get it done. We'll go after Tremaine Johnson, Marvin Jones, and Lyle Collins. I don't know if we're going to get Lyle Collins. I hope that's just a visual glitch and we are leading, but I have no idea. Let's find out. And we got, actually, Lyle Collins and Marvin Jones. We didn't get Tremaine Johnson, of all people. I thought that was going to be one of the ones that we were guaranteed to get. He signed with the Rams. All right. Well, we got... Two guys that the two guys that I actually like 
really wanted, and I didn't know we were going to get layout Collins. It must have just been some sort of glitch or something. But Collins now fits in at left guard. So now we just need to work on center and right tackle, and then our offense line's pretty much finished. Finished, And we add Marvin Jones to the team. Yeah, we, need, we still need some work, but it's only season one. It's only season one. I think that's going to be the end of my free agent period. I could just bring in some guys, but I don't really want to do that. I'd rather just go to the draft and... I'd rather just draft rookies and have them play, even if they're bad. At least they're younger <laughs> and cheaper. So we might as well just do that. We're probably going to have a top 10 pick at the least. Or I should know, at the, at the most, we're probably going to have a top 10 pick. We could be top 5. I doubt it, though. We might be top 7, though. We might have like 6 or 7. I have no idea. I guess we'll find out in this mock draft number five what we are picking. So the Niners have the first pick. They're going to take Jared Goff most likely. Then the Browns have DeForest Buckner. Then Jar Carson Wentz. We pick at number seven. So I was I was right. So we had six or seven. They have us taking Shaq Lawson, which I wouldn't hate. But that's probably not where I'm going to go. I feel like we should take Vernon Hargraves. But I, I've, I've taken Vernon Hargraves before. And it didn't end up bad. But I kind of want to, I mean, obviously I would love to take Jalen Ramsey. We'd have to trade up to number four, which I don't think would be too difficult. We're probably not going to get Bosa. We could get Bosa. But we're in play for any of these guys down the board. Jalen Smith would be cool. I hate that he's, uh, I hate that he's projected to go in the first round. Because I never, I'm, I never get Jalen Smith and I would love to have him on one of my teams, but... I feel like that'd be a little bit of a reach. We could trade down, but then I'd miss out on some of these other guys. So what do we do? Do we go for Vernon Hargraves, who looks really, really good? I mean, he's got he's got great physicals, or good enough physicals, but he's got A catch and A block shed, A man coverage, A press, A zone, A tackle. I mean, he's got all the stuff you want out of a number one corner, and we'd only be taking him two spots ahead of where he's projected. Or do we go with a more guaranteed guy like Jalen Ramsey or Joey Bosa? I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. We will have to figure it out. And we have to figure out where we're going to go in the second round, third round, all those later rounds. I will probably... Let me put... Oh, wait. I'm in the Northeast. Oops. Let me put the 100% on Vernon Hargraves just to figure out if our decision is going to be that easy or not. I really wish that Jalen Smith wasn't going to go first round. I'd love to get a guy like... Uh, Miles Jack, but he's also probably going to go first round. I don't think we can we can get in play for him. Deion Jones could be cool. I don't remember seeing his name, so he could be a second round pick that we get. We could pretty much figure out our linebacking core right away. We could get our linebacking core figured out if we get if we were able to grab Deion Jones and Miles Jack. That could be pretty good. But we're going to know 100% on Vernon Hargraves. That's for sure. And that'll make the decision to either trade up, trade down, or just take Vernon Hargraves. That'll make that decision easier. I would assume he's going to be round one, but he could also be top five talent. I don't know. I don't remember last time we took him what he was. So let's take a final look. Vernon Hargraves is officially a top five true talent in the class. Is what I thought he was from what I remember drafting him the last time. I think we're going to take Vernon Hargraves. I think that's who the, the Bucks took in real life, which is hilarious. I wasn't even trying to do that. I think that's who they took in this draft in real life. Let's start drafting. We don't have to worry about trading up or down because we are in a position to get him anyway. So the Niners have the first pick. They take Jared Goff. They've got their quarterback. DeForest Buckner goes to the Browns. Carson Wentz to the Giants. So he's headed to New York. So he goes from Philadelphia in real life, which is a horrible market for like media and stuff for a young quarterback. And he goes to New York, which isn't much better. Joey Bosa to the Rams, Leonard Floyd to the Colts, and now we are up at seven, and I'm just going to grab Vernon Hargraves. We know he's a true five talent, true top five talent, and he's going to be our new number one corner. We didn't get Jermaine Johnson, we got Vernon Hargraves. Maybe he can have a better career than he did in real life. 90 speed, 91 acceleration, 94 agility, 94 change direction. He's a great corner. He's five foot ten, right around that spot that you would want. Maybe you want like a six foot corner, but it is what it is. He's still very good. Zeke goes to the Jags. Dolphins get burnt toast. Eli Apple. William Jackson the third. Corey Coleman. Jalen Ramsey's still on the board. Artie Burns goes. No, Jalen had to have gone. He had to. It must have skipped a pick because 
Jalen Ramsey, yeah, Jalen Ramsey's gone. I thought, I thought, so. I was gonna say, how is Jalen Ramsey not getting picked before these guys? But he must have got picked earlier. I just uh, it skipped a pick on accident. Sometimes when I have um, not control of another team, but I'm still usering another team because I didn't want to retire the coach, but everything is on auto and all that stuff, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, sometimes it'll skip a pick of the team that I am control of, but I'm not really in control. So that must have been where Ramsey went. Josh Toxen goes, Shaq Lawson, Darren Lee, Hunter Henry, Will Fuller, Laquan Shredwell, Paxton Lynch, Sheldon Rankins, Emmanuel Ogba, Ryan Kelly, Carl Joseph, Sterling Shepard, Laramie Tunsil to the Patriots. That's an interesting one. There goes Jalen Smith. That would have been nice to have. You see like how it skipped really quickly there? That's that's I think something that happened. Xavion Howard. Miles Jack to the Steelers. I was hoping he would fall to us. I didn't think he would, but I was hoping he would. I think we're going to take Deion Jones with this pick. That's kind of where I'm thinking here. Ronnie Stanley's still in the, the draft. Although, Kenny Clark is here. He could be our replacement for... He could be our replacement for... Gerald McCoy. But then again, we have Gerald McCoy... I never get Kenny Clark. I always want Kenny Clark, but I never get him. I also never get Deion Jones. And Deion Jones is certainly not going to be here. He's got the elite speed. He looks fantastic. I think, I mean, we need linebacker more than we need D-tackle because we have Gerald McCoy. So I'm going to grab Deion Jones here. 87 speed, 89 acceleration for a linebacker who seems to be uh, glitched with the neck gator thing that I have. I have a mod for like giving them the necks, the neck gators, and it seems like it's glitched on Deion Jones. But hey, that's still a very good pickup. Another hidden development player. He will start pretty much immediately on our defensive or on our linebacking core. Kenny Clark goes the very next pick. Let's simulate to our pick in the third round. Where am I going to go in the third round here? James Bradbury is still here. That could be something. Because we could certainly use center. That's obvious. What about receivers? Braxton Miller, I like. What do they have his speed at? Does he have elite speed? He should have elite speed. He's only got good speed. That's disrespectful. Tyreek is still here. If we can grab Tyreek in the fourth round, that'd be awesome. I'm not going to go for him now. This would be a good spot to get a Austin Hooper. We'll come back to that. Connor McGovern. I don't really want any of the centers. Offensive line. This is not the greatest offensive line class. I'm not going to go there. I saw Matt Judon down there, but we know that he's super low overall, so we're not going to. We're not even going to worry about that. Left outside linebacker, we know Devondre Campbell's also super low overall. Blake Martinez is still here. I think he has star development for what I remember. But then there's James Bradbury. I kind of want to go for James Bradbury. Or Justin Simmons because we don't have any corner. Or we don't have any safeties that I like. I think this might be a Justin Simmons pickup. Although he's day three as well. He could go... But he's not going to be there obviously in the fifth round. And I want to take Tyreek in the fourth round if he's still there. So I'm, I think I'm going to take Justin Simmons with this pick. He might even start right away at free safety over like Chris Conte I think is his competition so 88 speed that's pretty good 91 acceleration that's a good pickup in the third round and we will cross our fingers that Tyreek makes it to round four hopefully he did Bradbury's gone I was hoping he might slip again but uh Tyreek is still here we're not going to waste any more time Tyreek welcome to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that is another huge pickup for Jameis Winston he's now got Mike Evans and now Tyreek Hill that's huge that is really, really big. In the fourth round, we will skip to the fifth round. What do we have available to us? Roberto Aguayo, Aguayo. Tavon Young. He's a round one talent. There's no way that he's... A, he's got to be, like, potentially undrafted or something. Other teams just scouted him a little bit more. There's no way he'd still be here if he was actually solid. We don't need a quarterback. Don't want any of these running backs. We already got our receiver. Tight ends are gone now that I would take. Offensive line is not great. Don't want any of them. Judon's still here. I don't. We know he's such a low overall. It's, it's probably be too difficult to, to develop him. But he might start, I guess. That's a possibility. He could start. I do like Landon Roberts, though. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Judon. We're gonna take Judon. 
We know his development trait. We know he's he's bad. He's like a 69 or 68 overall, something like that. We know that going in. But if he starts right away, maybe he can turn into something. Usually in my videos, we already have a, a guy at that position. So he doesn't get to start. And that kind of stops his development. Uh, oh, man, Atlanta Roberts got taken. I was going to take him with this pick. That sucks. Okay. There's not really anybody else that I want. David Onyemata or DJ Reader. Ooh, those could be good pickups. Let's take DJ Reader with this pick. That's a nice little sneaky pickup. And he's also development trait. We're getting a lot of development traits. I'm not missing on my development traits in this first draft. At least I have in the first six picks. And we're really working on this defense. We are really trying to fix it. Final pick. I might just take Roberto Aguayo. I did re-sign my kicker for like seven seasons, but I might just take Aguayo just because... There's not really anybody else that I want. So I, I might just do that. I mean, Gru, Gruger Hill is a possibility. But I think I'm just going to take Roberto Aguayo. The Bucks took him to real life. He is the only normal development. But might as well stay a little bit true to real life. And take a guy the Bucks did take. Even though we took Vernon Hargraves as well. Who the Bucks took. <laughs> I think that was a really good draft. Did we draft any offense? Oh, besides Tyreek. We drafted Tyreek. But other than that, did we draft any offense? We didn't. We dug all defense except for Tyreek Hill. So Vernon Hargaves ends up being a 79. He will start right away at number one corner. Deion Jones will start right away at left outside linebacker being a 77. Justin Simmons probably won't get to start right away, unfortunately, at 68 overall. But maybe I'll just make him start anyway. Uh, Tyreek is a 75. Amazing. Judon. Oh, I was wrong. I was. He's a 59. I thought he was a 60. He's a 59. Okay, so I was wrong on that. Reader's a 68. Aguayo is a 68 as well. How good was the class? Even though we know pretty much how good it was because we've taken a look at it before. Ramsey, 83. Nick Martin's an 81. Jalen Smith's an 80. Hargrave, 79. We know the drill. We've seen that before. All right. I feel like we had a really, really good draft there. We got a lot of defense pieces. And then we add Tyreek Hill to the offense, which is going to give Jameis another weapon. I feel like season two is going to be a little bit better than what season one was. We will adjust the lineup. We need to work on the offense. We can't forget that. But now we have Mike Evans. We have Marvin Jones and Tyreek Hill along with Vincent Jackson. And Adam Humphreys. I guess you want to count Adam Humphreys down there. That's a pretty good receiving core right now for, for Jameis, who's only starting to get better. Offensive line still in progress, but looking better. We've got Deion Jones, who's going to start right away at left outside linebacker. Middle linebacker is not great. Uh, Judon... We're going to turn Judon into a right end, and then we're going to start him right away over everybody. I know it's going to be bad, but he needs that development. He needs to play right away. So Judon's going to play right away at right out, or right end. And we will go into the depth chart and make it so. All right, let's make Matthew Judon our starter at right end. There we go. So he will start. Maybe he'll play really well and, and be a good player for us. Who knows? Let's do that. And then have Dion right up there. Judon. Oops, I didn't want to go to Jamie Metter. Sorry about that. Judon will be the number one. Hargraves will also be the number one corner over Altron Werner. Justin Simmons will be the number one free safety over Chris Conti. And we got all our rookies playing except for DJ Reader. All of our rookies will play. Tyreek should get a little bit of minutes or a little bit of uh, snaps. And we'll see how this team does in year number two. I think we're going to be a little bit better. We need to see that progression from Jameis Winston is, is the main thing. But now he's got a few more weapons. He's got Marvin Jones. He's got Tyreek. We'll see how he does. I will catch you guys at the end of season number two with the results on how the team and Jameis Winston, most importantly, did. Season two is wrapped up and we did improve. We went six and ten in year number one. We go nine and eight here in year number two. A lot better of improvement. We're getting to see some young the young guys actually get to play, which is nice. Jameis had another interesting season. 35 touchdowns or 35 touchdowns. 3,500 yards, 20 touchdowns, 10 picks. I mean, the splits are pretty good. I'd like to see him throw a little bit more, but. It is what it is. Doug Martin, 1,200 yards, 8 touchdowns. He's just staying pretty consistent. Mike Evans did get over 1,000 yards and 8 touchdowns. Marvin Jones, his first season here, had 900 yards, 3 touchdowns. Tyreek didn't get a lot of play time. That's okay. He'll probably go up to number 2 receiver pretty soon. 
I don't, I don't know. Maybe DeMarvin Jones having this good of a season, he'll go up to start development. That's a possibility. Defensively, the rookie, Deion Jones, left outside linebacker, 117 tackles, 11 for loss, 5 sacks, 1 pick. Defensive rookie of the year? I mean, come on. Alteron Werner, 92 tackles. Major Wright at 87. Jerome, Jerry McCoy at 83. Lamont David, 82. Hargraves had 81 tackles. Jerry McCoy led the team with 18 tackles for loss. Bruce Carter had 13. Deion Jones, 11. Golston had 11. Sack leader was McCoy with 11. David had 10. Carter had 5. So did Deion Jones. Pick leader was Jonathan Banks with 3. Where is Hargraves at? Hargraves only had 1 pick. I mean, that's a fine rookie season. I'm really hoping that uh, Deion Jones won Defensive Rookie of the Year. I really need that. But we didn't make the playoffs again for Season 2. But we're getting better. We are improving, which is nice. That's nice to see. We just need to, to add a few more pieces to get this team fully where we needed to go. And it's Steelers, Cardinals again in the Super Bowl. Well, Steelers again in the Super Bowl. They won it last year. Can they do it again? I don't know. But we're going to find out. Here we go. Steelers, Cardinals, they beat the Chiefs. Cardinals beat the Seahawks, which is not an easy task back in this era. That is for sure. It is not an easy task. But can they do it? Can they beat the Steelers, the defending champions? No, they can't. Steelers go back-to-back -back in the Super Bowl. How rare is that in a Madden simulation, especially in a modded simulation? The Steelers go back-to-back. -back. Le'Veon Bell, this time, is your MVP of the Super Bowl. It is Alex Smith back-to-back -back MVPs of the league. That Chiefs offense is just going crazy. Sterling Shepard, Khalil Mack are the players of the year. Sterling Shepard wins Offensive Rookie of the Year for the Panthers. And unfortunately, we didn't get it on Defensive Player of the Year. It is Miles Jack who wins Defensive Rookie of the Year for the Steelers, who just won the Super Bowl. So, I guess that's good for them. But Miles Jack wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. I would like to see what Miles Jack put up in terms of his stats. Are they comparable to what... Deion Jones did so let's let's refresh on what Deion Jones did Deion Jones had 117 tackles 11 for loss five sacks and a pick if we go to the Steelers what did Miles Jack do Miles Jack had 89 tackles seven for loss four picks or four sacks and six picks so did he win it solely based on his interceptions because Miles Jack or uh, Deion Jones had more sacks more tackles more for loss and he just didn't have as many picks I feel like that's a little bogus that they gave it to Miles Jack, but whatever. I guess it is what it is. Let's quickly take a look at a development trade upgrades, or possibly development trade upgrades. So we don't see any on the offense. We see Tyreek go up. Tyreek is going to be number three now. He's just behind Marvin Jones. Offense doesn't move, although Jameis is an 88 overall. That's nice to see. And then on the defense, Judon actually goes up to 64 overall, so that's nice to see. Hargraves has superstar development. Uh, Deion Jones has X-Factor. Okay, did he have that at the beginning? Progression history? No, he had Superstar Development, but he got it in, in uh, Super Bowl week. He got up. So he does have Superstar Development when you draft him, but he has X-Factor now. Bruce Carter actually went up. Justin Simmons is star. Uh, June obviously is star. All right, DJ Reader is star as well. He'll go up to number two behind Joe McCoy. Okay, so we need to see more progression from Matt Judon. We need to see... Um, how old is Bruce Carter? He is 29, so he's... It's probably a little bit late to get him start development, but whatever. Marvin Jones, funny enough, didn't go up. So he's probably going to get passed by Tyreek Hill pretty soon. Uh, I think I re-signed everybody that I need to re-sign at week 11. I don't want Reed Fraggle. I don't want Mike Glennon. I don't want Josh Allen, Mike James. Nah, I don't need any of those guys. We can go into the free agency period. I'm not expecting much. If we're being totally honest, I'm not expecting much from this free agency period. I did load in the 2017 draft class, so we don't have to worry about that. Free agency is upon us, and we've got fullbacks and kickers. Great. All right. Running back. I could, I guess, use a backup. Spencer Ware as a backup to... A backup to Doug Martin wouldn't be bad. I don't know what the other teams are offering him. We'll throw him a little bag like that. He likes it. Fullback, we don't need. Receiver, we're pretty good on receiver at this point. I mean, we have Marvin Jones. We have Tyreek. We have Mike Evans, obviously. 
but if we could grab somebody else, that might be good. I'm not really sure. I don't really want any of these guys here, though. That's the problem. Maybe Robert Woods, Bobby Trees, get a little Bobby Trees action in here. I'll, I'll sign him. He can be our fourth receiver. Get a little Bobby Trees action. And then we got tight end. We don't really need a tight end. I'm fine with what we got. Offensive line. We do need a center, but there's not a center that I want. JC Treader. He doesn't have the development trait that I'm looking for. So I'll have to wait on that, probably. Right tackle. Justin Pugh at 27. Probably could be a nice band-aid. Or maybe he becomes our franchise right tackle. I don't know. I guess we'll find out if he wants to even sign with us. Uh, that's probably a glitch just like the the Lyle Collins one. Vince Wilfork. Don't want any of these guys. Nobody here. We could use a middle linebacker. That's the big thing. Because we have Bruce Carter, but he's a little bit older. He's 29. And... Uh, could we get Texans head coach, head coach D'Amico Ryans? And we have Quan Alexander, but Quan Alexander is just not developing is the only problem. So maybe like a Kevin Minter at 26 could be a nice pickup for us. We're battling with the Patriots. I'd be willing to give you six million and six million, six and a half million. That puts us over the Patriots. I don't know if he's going to choose us or not corner I don't really want any of these guys I don't think maybe Logan Ryan maybe Logan Ryan could be good that's all five of my options or my negotiations we'll see if we get these guys I don't know everybody signed how many of them signed with us Everybody, we got all five. Okay, Kevin Minter, Justin Pugh, Robert Woods, Logan Ryan, Spencer Ware. So we get some offensive help. And we get another middle linebacker. That should help us out as well. And Justin Pugh, crucially, could be our, our right tackle for the future. So he goes in there. We've got wide receiver help with Robert Woods. We just need to get that center figured out. Cameron Brate's probably just going to start over Tim Wright. And then on the defense, Minter will jump into number one. Uh, middle linebacker we'll put Judon back up at starting there Simmons will start back up here all right then we can go into the draft and figure out what we got to do figure out where we're drafting and then decide who we're gonna go with what do we need we need strong safety because major rights is not gonna cut it we need another defensive lineman another pass rusher alongside Judon and McCoy we need another middle linebacker because I just don't think that Quan Alexander is going to cut it. And crucially, TJ Watt is in this class. So we can move Deion Jones inside and get TJ Watt. That's a possibility. Uh, let's see. We could use another corner, especially another young corner. But Alteron Vernon's holding it down. He's, he's playing pretty well. All right, mock draft number five. Where do they have us drafting? Garrett's going to go number one, although... But we've seen before that Miles Garrett doesn't go number one, so we'll see what happens. They have us drafting at pick number pick number 17, taking Jonathan Allen. I would be perfectly fine taking Jonathan Allen at that pick. That is unbelievably awesome. Unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to get like a, a Ruben Foster or TJ Watt, but I would be totally fine taking Jonathan Allen because we need defensive lineman help. And we can move, eventually, Jonathan Allen into D-tackle and then have him replace Jerry McCoy. That's a possibility. I am completely fine taking Jonathan Allen with that pick. Absolutely. Absolutely. The one thing I was worried about is maybe Jonathan Allen would get taken before us. But if he's projected to go right to us, I am happy with that. Strong safeties. Jabril Peppers was projected to go first round, I think. I'll scout Eddie Jackson because we could use... We definitely need strong safety. Another young corner. We're going to have to focus around here. And it could be Tredavious White. Or maybe a Desmond King down the board. Right outside linebacker. We're not going to be in play for TJ Watt now that we know. But we could be in play for Zach Cunningham. I already scouted Raekwon McMillan. I might try, try to get him. <clears throat> Excuse me. I might try to get Raekwon McMillan. 
D tackle. We're not going to be in play for any of the good players. We're probably going to draft Jonathan Allen. Carl Lawson, Trey Hendrickson down the board would not be bad. Those are intriguing. And then around left end, you got Taco Charlton, Dietrich Wise. Who do I want to use this last? These last two things on. We need a center, but I just don't think this is the center class either. I mean, these guys are fine, but I don't think they're going to be worth it. Johnu Smith down the board is intriguing at tight end. Receiver, you got Cooper Cup, but we're not going to be in play for Cooper Cup. We could be in play for a Juju or a Chris Godwin. We could take Chris Godwin. Might as well just take everybody that the Bucks took. I don't want anybody down here, I don't think. I would like either, like, maybe Kenny Galladay or Chris Godwin as another receiver. We're probably not going to be in the market for any of the running backs. And then, obviously, we don't need a quarterback. We're sticking with with our guys. I don't even know where to go with these next couple picks. Or these, ne these last two things. I might use one on Zach Cunningham. And then... Maybe we use it on Samson uh, Ebukam. That could be a nice pickup. If we don't get Zach Cunningham. May Ooh, Matt Milano. I just saw Matt Milano down the board. That could be a nice pickup. That's a nice value pickup down the board. Day three. We can move him to middle linebacker. All right. We'll figure out what we're going to do. We will see what we're going to do. I like the idea of taking Jonathan Allen. I think that's going to be really, really big. Because he can start right away over William Golston at left end and then we can move him over to D tackle when inevitably Jared McCoy gets older if we haven't won a Super Bowl by then so number one pick in the draft is Miles Garrett Mitch Trubisky goes to Leonard Fournette Jamal Adams to the Jets look at that Christian McCaffrey to the Bears Mike Williams Solomon Thomas Derek Barnett John Ross I didn't mean to go into the draft board All right, good luck with that, Browns. Corey Davis. Pat Mahomes goes to Denver now. Okay. What a twist of fate. Marshawn Lattimore. Jabril Peppers. I kind of wanted Jabril Peppers, but I didn't think he was going to fall to us. We could have traded up, I guess. But we're going to grab ourselves Jonathan Allen. He is probably the best player available other than maybe TJ Watt. But we need defensive line more than we need linebacker, at least outside linebacker. And Jonathan Allen is my guy for this one. Huge first-round pickup. Huge first-round pickup. And we are going to skip to our next user pick, which is pick 17 of the second round. Cooper Cup actually fell to the pick right before us. If we would have been able to get Cooper Cup, I would have been unbelievably happy. Zach Cunningham is available. I do like that. We might need to grab Eddie Jackson in the third round. I like the fact that Zach Cunningham is still here because I think Zach Cunningham is going to be our guy. What else do I like? Is there anything else here? Or is it going to be... Is it going to be Cunningham? I think that's the move. There's Johnny Smith. Receivers are still a little bit of depth there. I think I'm going to take Zach Cunningham with this pick. We can move... Honestly, we can move Levante David or Deion Jones inside. And have Zach Cunningham play outside. That's a big pickup. Linebacking core is looking really, really good now. Linebacking core is looking really, really good. We go to the third round. Who's going to be here? I hope that Eddie Jackson's still here. Okay, that's probably who I'm going to go with, but I'll just check to make sure there's nobody that I'm passing up on. Okay, I'm still intrigued by Matt Milano. I kind of want to grab him a little bit later. Carl Lawson's down the board as well. I don't know if Carl Lawson's going to be here next pick up he might be but it'll be tough i i think our our best bet is to get eddie jackson here we need strong safety bad so we're gonna grab eddie jackson another big pickup he's probably gonna start at that strong safety right away over major right and now into the fourth round we'll take a look and see if if carl lawson's still on the board juju's still on the board actually i wouldn't hate that so we've got no Carl Lawson. That's kind of sucky. I was hoping he'd still be there. 
Milano's still there. We could probably grab Milano in the next round, in the fifth round. I think maybe round five is a better pickup than round four. It's probably a little bit too early. Having Juju on the board is really interesting. Juju, Godwin, and Galladay are all on the board. I might grab Juju. I mean, he's a he's a nice receiver. I'm going to grab Juju Smith-Schuster. I don't know how he fell all the way to the fourth round, but I feel like that's a steal of a pickup, especially having hidden development. I feel like that's an absolute steal of a pickup. Now we go to the fifth round. We'll take a look at Matt Milano. I feel like the fifth round's more of a, of a pick to grab him. Desmond King's still on the board. So is Razul Douglas. There's a couple of decent corners I could grab. It's probably time to grab Matt Milano. I think a fifth round pick is a lot more reasonable than a fourth round pick. So we're going to grab Matt Milano. Only normal development. He doesn't have to start right away, but I like having him on the team. He can certainly develop, and he's pretty quick too. So Matt Milano in the fifth round. And then sixth round, we'll take a look at corner. It could be Desmond King, but if he's gone, there's a lot of corners still on the board. Desmond King is available. I think he's going to be a low overall, but another corner to the team in Desmond King. And then the seventh round, I have absolutely no idea where we're going to go with this. We'll see who is still available with our final pick. Kevin King is still available. He's got to be super trash. Who is still... Devon Gotchow is still available. Mo Ali Cox is still available. Nick Mullins, there he is. Um, there's a couple guys. There's a couple guys. Mac Collins, DJ Jones. I think I'm going to go either Mo Ali Cox or... Who was the other guy? Devon Gotchow. We just got DJ Reader. Let's go Mo Ali Cox. He's going to be no one of element. He's going to be not great, but... Another body at tight end is not a bad thing. That is for sure. All right. I feel like that was another really good draft. Another really, really good draft. We've had two really solid drafts getting a bunch of players that are going to develop and going to be good. Like, we haven't even had to trade up or anything. We've just happened to fall into really good spots. Jonathan Allen's a 74. Zach Cunningham's a 75. Eddie Jackson's a 72. Juju's a 70. We got Juju in the fourth round. He's a 72 overall. That's a really good value. Milano, 70. Desmond King, 71. And Molly Cox is 64. That's an amazing draft. Amazing draft. Not having to trade up at all. We just got all those guys right where we were. I feel like it's a really, really solid draft. That's going to help us out in the future. No doubt about it. No doubt about her. Season number three could be the season we make the playoffs for the first time. That is a possibility. We will adjust the lineup, get everybody ready. All right, we're going to have Cameron Bright start at, at tight end. We're going to have pretty good receivers. Jameis is getting better. And then on defense, they've got Jonathan Allen starting over here, so we'll have Judon start over there. That's fine. Reader will go to number two. Simmons will start over you. I'll probably move Dion to middle linebacker. And then have Zach Cunningham start. That's probably the smart thing to do. So let's have Deion Jones move to middle linebacker. And then Zach Cunningham can start over Bruce Carter. And there we go. Eddie Jackson can start over Bradley McDougal and Major Wright. I like it. I like it a lot. We got Werner. We got Hargraves. Defense is coming together. Defense is certainly coming together. I'm going to simulate Season 3. We're going to see how the team does. I hope that this season we're over 10 wins, but... Madden simulation is not that easy to figure out. We'll find out, though. I'll catch you guys at the end of Season 3. Season 3 is finished, and we have made the playoffs. We went 12-5, and five, so we went 6-10, and 9-8, and eight, and now 12-5. and five. The team is finally here. They finally started to play well. I'm so happy about it. I can't believe that in three seasons we're already here, but we have put some talent around Jameis Winston. And he's got 37 touchdowns, 22 picks, and 6 interceptions. He has dropped his interception total by, I think, 4, right? He had 10 last year. So, Jameis is getting better. And he's only going to get higher overall. So, he's only going to get better. Although, the I feel like the Tampa playbook on offense is kind of limiting him. But, right, I mean, it got us to the playoffs right now. So, I can't be too mad at it. And Doug Martin continues to just be a solid running back with his numbers. Mike Evans, 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Tyreek. 900 yards, 6 touchdowns. Marvin Jones had a good season. 
You love to see it. You absolutely love to see it. Defensively, Zach Cunningham is a rookie. 112 tackles. So that's Deion Jones last year led the team in tackles as a rookie. And now Zach Cunningham leads the team as a tackles this year as a rookie. Pretty good. Alteron Werner's just been unbelievably consistent. Deion Jones had another good year. Levante David had 19 and a half sacks. Give him defensive player of the year. Are you kidding me? 19 and a half sacks. Eddie Jackson was good in his rookie season. Vernon Hargraves is good in year number two. 19 and a half sacks. He also led the team with 18 tackles for loss. 17 for McCoy. Allen in his rookie year had 17. And then he destroyed it. Gerald McCoy had 18. Look at that one-two punch right there. You got a guy standing up and just rushing the passer like crazy. Then you got a guy coming through as a D tackle. Getting 18 sacks is crazy. Absolutely insane. Cunningham had three picks. So did Werner. Man, that's gotta be. Gotta be. Defensive player of the year. You would think. But now it's time for that all-important first playoff game. Wild card against the Packers. Are we going to win? We win 27-20. Now we take on the Minnesota Vikings. This one's going to be tough. This one's going to be tough. They're 12-5 just like us. I don't know if our defense has got what it takes. It's Seahawks and Cardinals. And then us versus uh, Minnesota is what my camera's blocking. Raiders and Dolphins, Steelers and, and Titans. Man, a trip to the NFC Championship would be awesome, but I just I don't know if it's going to happen. This is going to be very tough. Tampa and Minnesota. Like guys, I, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it happened for us 26 to 17. We beat the Vikings. We are playing in the NFC Championship our first season. Judon is getting better, which you love to see. We are playing against the one city of Seahawks who went 16-1. and one. If we were to beat this, I doubt, I highly doubt we beat the Seahawks. They had a phenomenal year. I do not see this happening whatsoever. Steelers versus Dolphins, so the Raiders got beat. The Steelers have a chance to go to three straight Super Bowls, by the way. Absolutely unbelievable. Oh, Seahawks versus Tampa. This is going to be so difficult. They went 16-1. and one. What do you want me to do with that? Such an unlucky draw. But hey, we had to play the best team. I was hoping the Cardinals might upset them, but they didn't. This is going to be un unsurmountable. Insurmountable? Yeah, insurmountable. This is going to be so tough. I highly, highly doubt we beat the Seahawks. We will find out. Oh, no. Now we lose 24-17. I, di I didn't think it was going to happen. Our miracle season comes to an end here in Season 3. We got to the NFC title game, so that's amazing, the fact that we got there. And it is going to be Seahawks and Steelers in the Super Bowl. The Steelers have a chance to go three straight Super Bowls. That's never happened in one of these rebuilds. It would be unbelievable if it did. I feel like this is going to be the Seahawks season, though. This has got to be the Seahawks chance. I mean, they went 16-1. and How good can you be? Who's going to win the Super Bowl here in year number three? It is the Seahawks, and they did it pretty convincingly. 35-14, I think is what that said. Yeah, 35-14. So the Steelers' dynasty has been put on hold as Russell Wilson wins MVP of the league. We've got Aaron Rodgers winning the MVP of the, the league. Russell Wilson wins MVP of the Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers wins MVP of the league. We do get Defensive Player of the Year. Levante David has won Defensive Player of the Year. Deshaun Watson wins Offensive Rookie of the Year for the Cowboys. And Miles Garrett wins defensive rookie of the year for the eagles but we do get an award unfortunately levante david's already an x-factor so he can't like go up to x-factor but that's still really really cool to get it to get him uh defensive player of the year finally we win an award. i feel like we never win awards it never happens for me but we go into the year three off season we've made the nfc championship so this team is already pretty much set in stone for how we're gonna develop we just need to add a few extra pieces to make that next step and the few extra pieces is probably going to be Tyreek moving up to wide receiver number one. Uh, Juju is going to move up to probably receiver four over Bobby Trees, over Robert Woods. The offense is looking pretty good. We still need to get that center. We're still working on the center. And there might be one in this draft that we could grab. Uh, we got Gerald McCoy up to or X Factor, which is awesome. Jonathan Allen's developing. Matt Judon's looking good. Altron Werner finally has gone up to star. It's about time. Justin Simmons is getting better. Levante David's obviously a stud. Deion Jones is looking good. I mean, the defense is looking much better. Much better than what it was. 
but we still need some pieces. We need to get that center. We need to get... Um, I don't know. We're, we're good on receiver. I mean, if Juju continues to develop, we're pretty solid on receiver. We need to get an extra corner. Probably maybe two corners. Because Werner's in his 30s, isn't he? He's 29. So he's getting a little bit older, but he's not in his 30s just yet. But we need to get that center. The center is probably the last piece on the offense. Because I'm, I'm fine with having Cameron Brait be our tight end. But the center is probably the last thing that we need. Uh, and our center is now retiring. Or not retiring, needs a new contract. I'll bring him back just in case we somehow can't get a center. Just so we have somebody. But I'm looking to replace him, absolutely. Everybody else can go. Nick Mullen, sorry. <laughs> You're not going to make the cut. Into free agency. Oh, we. I don't even know what we need. I Like I said, maybe another corner. But I don't know if we're going to find that in free agency. Ziggy Ansa has made it here. Wow. That could be our big splash. If we had Jonathan Allen, Jared McCoy, and Ziggy Ansa, it would halt the development of Matt Judon, but maybe we're trying... I mean, we're Super Bowl... Ch like, we're league favorite. That says right there, we're league favorite. I think this would be a huge pickup. This would, this would cement ourselves as we are going for it this year. We're going for it all. I don't know if we're going to be able to get him, but that would be unbelievably cool if we did. As for other receivers, Kenny Stills is not the guy. Unless you have star development, I'm probably not looking your way. And it doesn't look like any of these guys do. So, Darren Waller. Not Darren Waller. Delaney Walker. I don't know why I said Darren Waller. Dar Delaney Walker at X Factor, but at 77. I mean, Cameron Brate's like a 75. And he's a lot younger. So, I think we're fine with that. We need a center. And I think I'm going to draft a center. At least that's the goal. Jack Muhort at right tackle would be big if we could grab the two highest overall free agents in the class that would be huge for this team we'd be going for it all absolutely i don't know if we're going to be in the market though he might not choose us he might not choose us i hope he does jadevion Clowney being here is throwing me off because i kind of want him but then again, I don't think he fits the team. Jason McCordy has no offers. I know he's in his 30s. But I did say I want another corner. I'd give Jason McCordy a two-year deal. We'll probably grab him. Alright, so our offers... We're going after the two highest overall players in the free agency, in free agency class... I doubt we get both of them. We might end up with one of them. We'll come away with Jason McCourty, obviously. Everybody signed except for Ziggy Ansah. We got Muhort. We got McCourty. So our offense line, once we get that center, is completely finished. I might need to work a better offer for Ziggy Ansah here. Just to solidify ourselves as a championship contender. We will pay him a ton of money. We'll see if he accepts that. He has signed. Where did he sign? With us. That's huge. That's huge. Okay. So we have, we're going for it this year. I mean, we, we are all in now with that signing. With those two signings, Jack Muhort and with Ziggy Ansah. We are now officially going for it. We need to get the center. And funny enough, Jack, uh, Justin Pugh is an 80 overall or a 79 overall center. That's funny. But our offense line is pretty much figured out now except for that center position. We have receivers that I like. Juju is going to move above Robert Woods again because I adjust the lineup, so he will go above. Uh, and then on defense, Ziggy Ansah's right there. Then we got Jonathan Allen. I mean, I like the team, man. I really, really like the team. We add Jason McCourty to the team. We probably need one more corner. But the, the, those, are, those are signings that you don't sign unless... You're going for it all. We're all in. We are We are absolutely 100% all in. We made the NFC Championship. Those two, those two additions should put us across that line to get us to the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, we have to go up against teams like the, the Seahawks and the Packers. Who are notoriously in these mods very, very good. Maybe we can be a little bit better. I mean, they don't have Jameis Winston. We have that X-Factor, and his name is Jameis Winston. Famous Jameis. 
is our guy. Mock draft number five. Since we made the NFC title game, we're picking... Yeah, we're picking a number 30. They have us taking Frank Rag now. I would not hate that. That would be absolutely fine with me. I mean, obviously, it's the 2018 draft. You know who's in it. Getting Quentin Nelson would be awesome. But we're not going to be in the market for Quentin Nelson. I would, I'd be happy with Frank Rag now. That certainly is a, is a go-to pickup. Corners... Ooh, we're not going to be... If we're going to get Frank Ragnar, we're not going to be in the market for Jair Alexander. So we have to look a little bit further down. And maybe we go for a guy like Carlton Davis, who is a, an actual Buccaneer. I think he's going to be one of the guys that I scout just to find out how good he actually is. Middle linebacker, we're probably not going to be in the market for a Leighton Van Der Esch. Because we pick in the, the back half of the second round as well, obviously. So he's probably not going to be around by that point but fred warner certainly would be and we can move into middle linebacker and have our middle linebackers pretty much done or actually done so i like that defensive line we're pretty good on now and we need to get that center i did have frank ragnow scouted a little bit it looks like billy price has fallen james daniels we got to come away with frank ragnow he's the best center in the class at least he looks like he's the best center in the class. We got to come away with him. But there's also some good offensive linemen in this class. Like Braden Smith is here. If we could grab Braden Smith in the second round, that'd be awesome. Because we can move him to right tackle. But now we don't need a right tackle. I will scout Colton Miller. Just because he's intriguing. There's not really a receiver that we're going to be in play for. Mark Andrews in the second round is cool. Dalton Schultz in day three is cool. But I think we're going to be in play for... Hmm. I'll use it on Leighton Van Der Esch. If he somehow falls to pick 30 of the second round, then I would probably consider taking him. But there's, there's really no shot that he does. I highly doubt that he falls all the way. There is always that 1% possibility, but it's not going to happen. Start drafting. If we can come away with Frank Ragnow, that would be unbelievable. Bradley Chubb goes number one. Saquon goes two. Then Josh Rosen. Quentin Nelson ends up with the Colts. Look at that. Sam Darnold with the Ravens. So they, didn't, they didn't get Lamar Jackson. They got Sam Darnold. Denzel Ward with the Bengals. Marcus Davenport. Jamar Summers. Jay Alexander. Yeah, we just, we just never were going to be in play for Jay Alexander. Josh Allen goes to the Jets. Look at that. That is pretty cool. Vita Vea. Tremaine Edmonds. Rashawn Evans. Deron Payne. DJ Moore. I didn't want to do that. Roquan Smith is still on the board. That's also somebody I'd be interested in, but I doubt he falls. I mean, we still got 10 picks. Minka. Ichida Nwosu. There goes Roquan to the Dallas Cowboys. Didn't see him falling, but you never know. Colton Miller goes first round. Kind of sucks. Derwin James. Austin Corbett. Lamar Jackson. And now we are up. We're going to grab Frank Ragnow with this pick. He is the clear best center in the class. And we've got our offense line figured out now. We don't have to worry about offense line anymore. That is all sorted. Let's simulate to our next pick in the second round. Harold Landry just got taken. Is Mason Rudolph. Is Fred Warner on the board? Ah, yeah, yeah. Fred Warner got taken. That's okay. Pretty much all of my plans at linebacker are out the window. That kind of blows. Just slightly. That's what happens when, you, when you're good. You pick pretty late in the draft. And there's not really a lot of guys that I like. Because who was the guy that I scouted here in the second round? In that corner? I don't even remember. But he's gone. I, I would have remembered if I saw his name. But I don't remember him. So he's gone. I don't see him on there. Kind of sucks. A lot of the offensive linemen that I liked are gone, too. That's tough. Orlando Brown is there. Orlando Brown could be a guy for me. Man, a lot of the, the tight... Man, I hate picking this late in the draft. There's a lot of guys that I like that are just gone now. They're just straight up gone. I don't even know where to go. This is only the second round. I have no idea where to go. I don't really want DJ Shark. I don't think Michael Gallup's the right pick here. We can get Dalton Schultz a little later if I absolutely want him. I mean, Wyatt Teller's on the board, but he's day three. He's round three to four. 
Orlando Brown's probably the guy. I'm not seeing anybody else that I absolutely have to have. We could maybe grab Jerome Baker later in the round, or later in, in round three. Jawan Bentley's here, but that's probably not the guy. I think Orlando Brown's the pickup, and then we have to cross our fingers that we get Jerome Baker, I guess. I don't know if he'll fall to us, though. We could maybe pick up Josie Jewell if he's on the board still. Let's take a look and see. Sam Hubbard's still there. So we got no... Okay, we have Josie Jewell. Baker is gone. Sam Hubbard... Okay, so it's between Sam Hubbard and Josie Jewell. Josie Jewell's day three. We might be able to get him in the fourth round. I'm going to pick up Sam Hubbard here. Only known development, but that's more depth on the defensive line. And at this point in the draft, we're not really looking for anything specific because we pretty much have our guys figured out. DJ Reed. Ooh, DJ Reed. And JC Jackson and Trey Flowers. I might pick up a DJ Reed because there's Josie Jewel still. I'm, I'm going to risk it and we're going to grab DJ Reed here. I don't know if he's going to have a development trait, but that's another solid corner to add to the rotation. And we'll go to the fifth round and figure out what we take with this pick. I have no idea whatsoever. I'm guessing... Oh, Josie Jewel still is on the board. Schultz is gone, but Conklin's there. It's probably going to be Josie Jewel here. Although Trey Flowers is still here. Let's just grab Josie. We've been, we've been toying with the idea for so long. We're going to grab Josie Jewel. He's, he's going to take a while to develop. He's probably not going to ever factor in. But he's a solid body. He is a solid, solid body. I don't even know if I want anybody else. I might just let the CPU handle the rest of this. I don't really want anybody here. Maybe there's a punter I can grab in the sixth round. Uh, Michael Dixon. There's a couple names. Let's grab... Let's grab J.K. Scott and then get out of here. 93 kick power. Hidden development for J.K. Scott. Good for him. Good for him. All right, let's get out of this draft. I think we had another solid draft. I can't complain too much. I did want Jerome Baker, but that's okay. We were just picking too late in the draft to get him, and, and I wasn't going to trade up. Uh, we got Frank Ragnow, so our offense line's figured out. We also got Atlanta Brown, too. 75 overall. Hubbard's 66. Reed's a 70. Jules is 61. J.K. is 75. They took uh, Fuller Runzo Fadakasi, who is not good. At least now. Best player in the class was Quentin Nelson. No surprise. Jay Alexander, Mark Andrews. Yada, yada, yada. You get the gist. So let's go into Season 4. We just made the NFC title game. We went 12-5. and five. We are on the cusp of greatness. I don't see why we can't do even better. Like 14 wins. Something like that. So we will move Juju back up. Ragnar will start at center. Jameis Winston's getting good. Still getting good. Defense is looking solid. A lot better. We got Ziggy Ansah now. We add in the corners. I mean, we just need development from the boys. And if we win games, that's going to go up. So I think we're pretty good. Season 4, I'm going to simulate. And I expect us to be maybe not the one seed, but maybe the two seed at, at the least, I would think, with the team that we've put together. I would hope so. We've wrapped up the regular season for season four, and we were even better. We've just progressively gotten better. And that's what you want to see in a rebuild, obviously. We went six and ten in year one. We went nine and eight in year number two. We won, what, 12 games last year in year number three, and now we went 14 and three. We're the one seed in the division, or in the conference, I should say, and we are now only a few games away from greatness. Only a few games away. We got to take a look at these stats. Jameis Winston is just becoming like the most consistent, not turning the ball over quarterback you've ever seen, which is like the opposite of what Jameis Winston is in real life. Jameis Winston, 29 picks, 5 interceptions, 3,700 uh, 3, yards. That's a solid season from a quarterback that doesn't have to do a whole lot. Doug Martin continues to be the, the mark of consistency at running back. Mike Evans gets 1,000 yards and 8 touchdowns. Tyreek Hill played well. Marvin Jones played well. 
Juju even got a few catches. Defensively, Deion Jones reclaimed his throne as the tackle leader. 122. 98 for Zach Cunningham. 95 for David. 95 for Werner. Love to see it. Levante David, 21 tackles for loss. 17 for McCoy. So Allen had 17 as well. Ziggy Anson, 9 and 16 sacks. So it looks like going all in really paid off. 18 and a half sacks for Levante David trying to defend that um, defensive player of the year crown. He might get it again. Ezekiel Ansa, 16 sacks. Gerald McCoy, 10 and a half. Jonathan Allen, 5 and a half. Cunningham, 5 and a half. Deion Jones, 3. Pick leader was Cunningham with 4. Okay. I mean, we've seen how much they value interceptions as well. Maybe Zach Cunningham will get it. But that is some crazy production from the boys. Let's just take a look at some overalls. Are we seeing the progression? I mean, Jameis is a 97. No, he's 90. He's 96. Excuse me. He's a 96 overall, uh, playing up to a 99. Tyreek's getting better. Juju's getting better. Doug Martin's getting better. Mike Evans, obviously, is a stud. The offensive line looks amazing now with Jack Muhart there. Uh, looks like Cam Brake fell, but that's okay. Uh, and then on the defense, I mean, Dion was a fantastic pickup. Obviously, Levante David's a stud. Zach Cunningham's been amazing. He might even go up to superstar development when we get to the past the Super Bowl. McCoy's been amazing. Ziggy Ansa, we were going all in, and he's proven that he is worth the money. Uh, unfortunately, Judon. Judon probably be in the low 70s by now, but he's just he's not playing because we went in all in on Anza. And Vernon Hargraves has been a number one corner. So you love to see it, man. You love to see it. Now we take on the Giants. They were 10 and 7. We should cruise past this team, you would think, but you never know. And we do, oh, we crushed them. Oh, we crushed them. 49 and four, to 14. We beat the Giants badly. And now we get our revenge. We played the Seahawks last season in the NFC Championship. But the, the roles are reversed. They were the one seed then. We are the one seed now. They, they tied us with the record, but we had the, the advantage because I'm assuming we must have beat them in the regular season at some point. So... We had the tiebreaker. We get the one seed. We now go one game away from a Super Bowl against really no threat. The Patriots and the, the Chiefs, five versus six over the AFC side of things. If we get through the Seahawks, it's pretty much, I don't want to say guaranteed, but it's very much in our favor that we're going to win the championship. But we got to get through this. It's never easy to get through the Seahawks team, this version of the Seahawks, the Legion of Boom, Russell Wilson, all these guys. They're very good, but I think we got the boys. They don't have Jameis Winston, and we do. Let's see if we can get our revenge over the Seattle Seahawks. Come on, boys. Do it. Oh, just barely. Oh, just barely. 20 to 17. We just get past the freaking Seahawks, man. They are so tough. I'm honestly shocked we even got it in the first place. And we now take on my favorite team, the New England Patriots. This is not an easy task by any means, but we were... Clearly the better team throughout the regular season, so we are favored on paper. The Vegas odds makers have us. Probably, I'd say, plus three and a half. I would probably say is the is the odds in the Super Bowl. Maybe, maybe plus five? I don't know. It's tough. I'd say plus three and a half would be the, would be the highest, though. Especially for the Super Bowl. You never know what can happen. Throw the, throw the records out when you get to the Super Bowl. But it's 14-3 versus 11-6. We are going to jump in and try to win our championship. This is not going to be an easy matchup, though. It is Tom Brady. It is Rob Gronkowski. And we know how Tom Brady gets when he's in a Super Bowl. But we lead 14-3 to second quarter. I like the sound of that. Come on, offense. Jameis Winston versus Tom Brady. 21-3. to It's a match you would love to see. Jameis Winston versus Tom Brady. And we are cooking 24-3 fourth quarter. It's 31-3. We're going to win the Super Bowl. 38-3. to we have won the... Well, we haven't officially. But we will win the Super Bowl, ladies and gentlemen. And we will complete the rebuild in four seasons. Oh, God, I love this Patriots team, man. Dante Hightower. I like the real Patriots squad that had all those boys on it. Unbelievable. But, unfortunately for them, they have to go down to us. And I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I mean, we got Jameis Winston. We gotta throw the ball, right? Mike Evans gets a nice catch. Clock is draining. We might as well go for like one more big play. Can I find Tyreek? I'm going to streak Tyreek just because I have Tyreek Hill. So we might as well do it. And I got Jameis Winston. He's got himself a cannon. We're going for it all. Tyreek Hill. He's got it. Touchdown. Tampa Bay. The icing on the cake. 
Oh, think of that combination. Jameis Winston to Tyree Kill, that would be an unbelievable combination. I had to do it. The Super Bowl, we were already going to win. And now we are dominating. And we have done it. We held Tom Brady and the New England Patriots to three points in a Super Bowl. And to think... Oh, Jameis has got a championship. And to think the defense was the major thing we had to fix when it came to this rebuild. And we got it done. Jameis has got a championship. Mike Evans. Oh, Tom. I'm sorry I had to do it to you. But Jameis has got himself a ring. He deserves it. Franchise quarterback right there. You love to see it. Put your hands on the, on the Lombardi. You deserve it, everybody. You absolutely deserve it. Is that Ali Marpet up there? <laughs> Jameis gets to hold it with Tyreek next to him. What a combo. What a duo that is. Just picture that in your mind. Jameis Winston just chucking bombs to Tyreek Hill. There it is. You never thought you'd see that sight, did you? And we got Lovey Smith with his magical beard standing next to him. Oh, it's just unbelievable. You love to see it. What a game. What a season. What a rebuild. We have completed the Tampa Bay Buccaneer rebuild. We have won them a championship. We have done the gosh darn thing. Jameis Winston, franchise quarterback, Super Bowl quarterback. Super Bowl winning quarterback. Lovey Smith got himself a contract extension. Really, the Super Bowl was that Tampa Seahawks game. That's what it was. That was the NFC Championship was the Super Bowl. Those were the two best teams. It just sucks that one of them had to lose before you get to the Super Bowl because we're in the same division or same conference. Let's take a look at the recap. Jameis Winston is your MVP of the Super Bowl. Uh, we don't win any other awards. Russell Wilson wins MVP of the league. Bradley Chubb and Dallas Goddard are the offensive and defensive rookies of the year. Doug Baldwin, Doug Baldwin and Khalil Mack are the players of the year. But we won the Super Bowl. We did it. We've completed the rebuild. Oh, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Any dev trade upgrades? Wow, no upgrades for like Mike Evans, Doug Martin, or Tyreek Hill. That's kind of crazy. On the defense... Zach Cunningham does go up to superstar, but nobody else that I notice has changed. So, yeah, we did it, boys. Pick it. I think picking up Deion Jones might have been one of the best calls that we made. Obviously, Vernon Hargraves was a, was a stud. He was our number one corner. He was amazing. We already had McCoy and David, but they were phenomenal. Zach Cunningham was a big pickup as well. But I think out of everybody that we drafted in this rebuild, I think Deion Jones was the biggest one. I mean, Tyreek Hill was fantastic as well. And then this man, not a true 99 just yet, but he is a Super Bowl winning quarterback, 98 throw power. I'm giving him that captaincy, even though it literally doesn't matter because we're not going on any further. He deserves to have the captaincy on him. Jameis Winston is a Super Bowl champion. That is going to do it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I truly appreciate it. And since it is Christmas Eve, at least that's what I think this video is going up, it probably is. I hope at least. Or it could be the day before Christmas Eve. I don't know. It's probably going up Christmas Eve, though. I have no idea. But anyway, hope you guys have a wonderful holiday. Since it is around the Christmas holiday, and it's it's well, again in the Christmas spirit. I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas. Uh, if you haven't already had it, if you're watching this video after Christmas, um, spend time with your families, your loved ones. Eat some good food. Get some nice presents. Think about the ones you've lost and the ones you have around. That's what the Christmas holiday is all about. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful holiday that you do celebrate. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. I do appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.